Um, this is an awkward angle and the awkward angle was brought to you by me because we are filming a reading vlog and it's gonna be a fucking vibe what am i reading you may ask well you should already know from the title and the thumbnail but blame it on the tequila arrived on my kindle today because miss fiona sent me an arc which is so amazing so i'm gonna try and read this asap and film my thoughts to let you guys know what i think and i just think it would be such a cool little video and i think me filming <clears throat> A vlog will encourage me to uh, film faster and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm just making a coffee quickly. I've got to um, edit my book haul I just filmed to get that up. And then we'll get reading. Um, so yes, I'm looking extremely orange on my hands especially because... I left the fake tan on too long and I'm just an oompa loompa at heart. So you can judge me all you fucking want, but just get off the video. Um, also... I don't know if you're a part of my Facebook group, Mary Sick Twisted Bitches, but... I've made some huge changes on the group and it is looking so good and I just cannot wait to clean that up and get rid of all the stupid posts and just have a cleaner and better environment on that page for you guys and start posting more regular content on there. I'm going to make a coffee, um, edit this video quickly and then I'm going to start it and I'm going to update you. Let's see if I can actually film a proper reading vlog because I tried to film one the other day and it was trash. We shall see, bitch. We shall. Okay, here comes the first check-in. It's actually the following night. The intro was filmed yesterday. I ended up so busy last night that I couldn't even start. It's Friday night. I'm home alone. I've put my phone on airplane mode. So let's talk about blame it on the tequila. I'm only 6% in, but I just need to say, Fiona, if you watch this, God, I miss your writing. It's just so good. It's so easy to read. It just flows. Um, so what I've gathered, this is a step-sibling romance, which I didn't even know that. I knew, like, the other trope that was involved in this book, but I didn't know the step-sibling part. So, yeah, it's about Nova and Parker. I don't know too much yet. Only a few chapters in. But Nova and Parker were really close when they were younger. They were very much in love. So back in the day, Parker was involved in a rock band and he still is now. His band ended up blowing up and they were going on a tour. He wanted Nova to come, but Nova didn't want to for some reason. It didn't really explain why she didn't want to go. I guess that's something you're going to find out throughout the book. Um, so he went without her. He promised her that he would come back for homecoming and that he would keep in contact with her. But as time went on, he kind of like ignored her phone calls. He broke his promises and stuff. And it just got to the point when Nova was just like, I'm out. And she cut off all contact with him. Now it's five years later and she's out with her friends and she's like dancing on the dance floor and her best friend is like filming her and she just thinks that her best friend is filming her like on her phone like normally but she's actually doing like an instagram live with parker but her best friend doesn't know nova and parker have a history her best friend just thinks that nova is a fan of parker and his music and his band but yeah she hasn't elaborated with her friends that she has a history with this parker dude obviously she's like kept up to date with him and his tours and stuff like that and they've just had like this phone call because he realized it was her on instagram on the instagram live and yeah i i feel like this is going to be a really good read um already i i can just feel the vibes i was following fiona quite closely when she was writing this she didn't say but I got the gist that this was going to be a bit of a slow burn, so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. As I said, I'm only a few chapters in, and I believe I'm up to chapter three, and it's gone from the present to the past. So it's dual timelines, which, sorry, Fiona, if you're watching this, I don't particularly like. Um... So I'm hoping that it's not dual timelines the entire book and it only goes back in time when it needs to like bring up something like important to do with Parker and Nova's relationship and how it got to where it is now and what's happened. But I don't, 
I don't really like dual timelines. I don't know what it is. And time jumps. I fucking despise. I do. Um, so I don't know if that's going to affect my thoughts on this this book and that's just a personal thing with me like I know some people love dual timelines me not so much that's my thoughts so far oh my god this book I love this book so much it's so good so much has happened already I'm 30% in so she's like oh, I'm laying on my bed this is how I'm gonna talk to you so get over it um Nova and Parker are talking again they've been talking often through FaceTime and texting and stuff like that. And talking to him again after all these years has opened up wounds, but she's trying to leave the past where it belongs, in the past. Parker really, really wants to see her, and um, she's really hesitant, but just being connected to him again and experiencing all the feelings that she had all those years ago again makes her um makes her want to see him too so she decides that she does want to see him and she wants to surprise him she knows that he is playing this gig for new year's eve in new york so she gets her girl gang tells them like she's going to surprise him at this like event her other best friend is just like maybe you should just message him and tell him that you're gonna go just in case like you don't want to you know just in case he's with someone else and Nova is like no Parker's single he told me that he's single so he is technically single but his agency has him like fake dating someone and on the new year's eve event he's meant to kiss his like fake girlfriend that he's dating on the countdown um so everyone's at this event nova's got this fucking backstage pass bitch and she's standing there in the crowd as the countdown goes like 10 9 8 7 6 and she's like just please feel me like just please turn around like look at me like feel me i'm here and he doesn't so she decides to charge forward and then his fake girlfriend comes out and kisses him. No. And now she's freaking out and she's like, fuck. And she's trying to get away. But one of the band members, because they were all friends um, back in the day, calls her name out, like her nickname Supernova. And then Parker realizes that she's in the crowd and she just saw him kiss that fucking girl. Jesus Christ. Overall, I love the book. It is going between dual timelines, like I said before, but it's not every chapter, which is good. It's only like when it's pivotal moments to do with their relationship in the past. Um, and there's a lot of holes at the moment. Like, what actually happened to them? Like, what happened to her? Like, why did he stop contacting her? All I know is that their parents separated and then that's when their relationship kind of dwindled and like i don't know i guess you learn about that as you go on and read but fuck good book babes fiona is one of my favorite authors um i love her voyeur series i loved the first book of this series which was blame it on the champagne um i think i like this one better good old rock star romance sometimes they can be really corny the only rock star romances i like are from carrie and cole Every other one that I've tried to like read, I thought were really lame. But Fiona's done a good job with this one. So it's time to update you guys. I stayed up till three o'clock this morning reading. I love this book. Honestly, I love it so much. Oh, what has even happened? Nova is actually a songwriter. She does a bunch of different things as her career. Like she's an influencer, photographer. She does like art and stuff like that. And she also writes songs. And back in the day, that's what her and Parker kind of like bonded over. She's been hired to write some songs for this band. And she goes for this interview and realizes it's Parker's band. So she kind of reunites with all the boys that she hasn't seen for years. And it's like kind of awkward because the last time she saw Parker, he was hooking up on stage with some other chick. Anyway, they're trying to navigate this as best as they can, but there's just so much tension, sexual tension, tension in general, like with anger and stuff like that because of their past. And she's currently on tour with them at the moment, um, songwriting and working with them on a new album. Man, I just want them to fuck. 
honestly, there was one like really intimate moment between the two of them where they were like showing each other their tattoos and, and telling stories about like where they got them from and stuff. And she like lifted up her top to show Parker her first tattoo. And he had his like finger and he was like tracing her spine. And then she was like, Parker. And then all the band members like barged into the room and like ruined the fucking moment. So this is very angsty. Slow burn, baby. Slow burn. And as I said last night, there is dual timelines, but you don't go back to the past too often, which I don't mind. So I am adjusting to the dual timelines. As I said, I don't really like them um, usually, but th with this and how this is written, I don't mind it because it's not too back and forth. So I've got two hours left of reading. I'm like, I think I'm like 50% maybe. Uh, so let's see where this goes. It's really good. Fiona, like, congrats, doll. You're such a good writer. You're one of my favorite authors. And I just, I just love your writing, honestly. You really inspire me. Like, last night when I was reading, I was, like, so inspired to write myself. Um, it's just something so effortless and easy and beautiful about her writing. It's just easy to consume and it just flows like a movie and I just love every minute of it. The angle is not on point, but what is on point is the ending of this book. I didn't document anything else after my last check-in because I was just so involved in the book. Sorry, I'm having trouble talking because I have um, a gum infection and I'm in a lot of pain, so I just want to wrap up this video. I loved Parker and Nova so much. There was so much angst, tension. There was a lot that went down in their past that you kind of unraveled throughout the book. Um, you didn't learn the life-changing events until pretty much near, near the end of the book, which I really enjoyed because it kept you on the edge of your seat and it left you wanting to find out. The sex was amazing. Once they finally had sex, oh my god. Fiona is one of my favorite, favorite authors when it comes to sex in all seriousness. She knows how to write a steamy scene. She always adds something new to her characters. Like she always makes their like sexual fantasy something a little bit different. Parker and Nova definitely had certain kinks that they had developed before they slept together and experienced together, which I really, really enjoyed. And it was steamy as fuck. The one thing that like I just loved so much about this book was Parker wasn't your typical alpha male. Like, yeah, he was a little bit alpha, but he honestly just had a heart of gold. And it was just nice to read a hero that wasn't like so possessive and aggressive. And you know what I mean? It was just nice to switch it up. I just found the book really creative. Like there were certain aspects of the book um, to do with like Nova's career and social media and her past and how she deals with her trauma. And just certain scenes. Like, there was a scene where they were in a lake. Parker started taking photos of Nova. And it was just brilliant. Honestly, brilliant. I just loved this book so, so much. So much, honestly. You need to read it right now. Because it was fabulous. Fiona, you did a great job. And I cannot wait for Ray's book. Ray is one of the female characters in this series. Um, she's a boss bitch. And at the end of Blame Onticular, it showed like a sneak peek of the next book. And it's going to be fucking epic. I reckon it's going to be the best one out of all three. Um, yes. It was a four star read for me. I loved it. I want more Fiona books. I can't wait to read the next book in this series. Congratulations, Fiona. You did an amazing job. Uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Thumbs up. Means the world to me. Subscribe before leaving. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.